Having safe and high performing candles is the biggest responsibility you have as a candle business owner. If a customer receives a candle which is either unsafe or doesn't perform well, it can really harm the reputation of your business. Today I wanted to share how I test burn my candles. Subscribe and hit the bell if you're a budding candle maker looking to start and grow your own business. You can also follow me on Instagram at Lena London Candles. Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Ashani and I'm the creator of Luna London, a home fragrance company. On this channel, we talk about candle making and selling candles online. So as I mentioned in the intro, today I wanted to share with you how I test burn my candles. Just a quick background on how I actually even select the wicks that I am going to be test burning. I use the Weedo Wick Configurator, which I've mentioned in quite a few videos before. I think it's very accurate generally and really helps me pick the right type of wick. Um, essentially what you have to do is go in, put in the type of wax you're using and the diameter of your jar and it'll give you a list of recommendations of wicks to try. I use CS2 wax from Candle Shack which is a paraffin blend. I generally know that Star Below or V series wicks are like really great for them so uh, but for the most part I use V series wicks in all of my candles. So today I'm going to be testing wicks for my Mindful Moments collection. If you have seen my previous haul like I think it was huge supply haul or something like that I'll link it up above but essentially in that video I mentioned that I use ribbon wicks and unfortunately if you're up to date with what What's happening in the candle world ribbon wicks have been discontinued so I am trying to find replacements for these containers so my mindful moments collection is different to my zodiac collection um, I have them in these cute little white tins which I get from tinware I'll pop that in the description box below if you were interested so because I knew I was going to be test burning um, these on camera today I went ahead and treated myself and put labels on my jars um, because I generally don't do that if it's just for me at home um, because it always feels like a waste I don't know if I'm the only one but this collection is inspired by tea and it's a collaboration with my friend Rebecca who has the Instagram account at Home Time Tea Time and I really love the packaging um, you'll see a close-up when we are doing the burn test so just a little bit about the containers and the wax that I've poured in and the fragrance oils I'm using so this is a 64 millimeter diameter container it holds about 100 grams of wax so this is the scent rose tea which is basically the candle shack fragrance oil roses and it's a very clean fresh cut rose smell is very much like a garden or true to life rose scent um which is really pretty i have already got my test burn sheets sorry it's like really oversaturated but but i'll put a screenshot of the test burn sheets i got this from the candle shack facebook group um someone very kindly shared it i'll pop her name somewhere on this just to give her credit um it's a really great form unfortunately i don't think i can share it because it's not for me to share but if you're part of the group then you can go ahead and probably just take it so just to quickly go through some of the information i've already got on my sheet from when i made the candle so i have the date of when i made the candle I have the wax name, the fragrance oil name, um, the the weight of the wax, the weight of the um, fragrance oil, the percentage of fragrance oil I'm using, and then also the melt temperature of the wax, the, um, the temperature I added my fragrance oil in, the pour temperature, the container warmed method. Um, so I just pop these on the heater on the radiator just because it's winter and it like heats up really quickly because they're tiny. And also the, the temperature to which my container was warmed to, and the number of pores. So I find with these, I have to do two pores. They always contract at the wick. And then um, just a bit of like visual information. So whether it had a smooth top frosting, wet spot sweating, dips or cold throw. So this is a really comprehensive um, burn sheet. I would highly recommend trying to get your hands on it. What I might do actually is tweak it a little bit and perhaps maybe then I can share it or make my own version. Have a look in the description box and um, hopefully I would have sorted something out. So that was all of the information of when I actually made the candle. So now we're gonna go ahead into the test burning part. So today I'm going to be test burning two wick sizes because I had some leftover wax previously from a previous make and I thought I'd just give it a go and that was a V seven wick so I don't know if you can see that but it's pretty much tunneled and it has not reached full melt pool um if you can see that so I think we can safely say that was too small um so today we're doing v10 and v8 so I am all set up here with my v10 and v8 um I don't really have to put anything more about the like percentage of fragrance oil or anything like that because they're both pretty much identical um they were made in the same batch it's not two different batches so you can see kind of from an aesthetic point of view it's got a pretty smooth top you can see that there's a slight dip there which to be honest when you actually look at it in real life you can't see it but I think the way the light is catching it it makes it a lot more more visible so that's one this one looks better 
Oh, and I'll give you a close up of the actual label. So I really like it, of course. Um, it's um, basically inspired by mindful moments and making time for rest in your everyday life. And it's basically got like eucalyptus, but we've changed the color of the eucalyptus to pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and light up my candles and let's see how we get on. So the candles are now lit. I will just show you the time. It is 11.08 and I will go ahead and put that in as a note. What I would say for smaller um, containers like this is like usually they would say like, you know, wait three hours until it reaches full melt pool. Um, obviously with something smaller, you may not need three hours. It might be less. So I will just wait until I have reached full melt pool to go ahead and then like blow them out. So now that I've noted down the start time, I will see you guys in two hours. Hey guys, so the time is now 12.30 and I thought it would be a good time to just check in and see how the candles are doing. It's been an hour and 20 minutes, so I just kind of wanted to show you what was going on. So you can see we haven't reached a full melt pool just yet. Uh, to be honest, I would say they both look quite similar in terms of the melt pool that they've managed to achieve even though this one is um, a smaller wick size uh, and in terms of the flame but I've got no mushrooming or anything just yet um, and in terms of the jar it doesn't feel too hot and I, to be honest I wouldn't expect so because it hasn't been very long at all so um, it looks like we may actually need um, you know a full two and a half to three hour burn to get a full melt pool. So that was it, our one hour and 20 minute check-in. I uh, will come back maybe in two hours or two and a half hours and see how we get on. Oh, sorry, one thing I forgot was to mention about the hot throw. So the hot throw is really strong at the moment. I generally get that with the V series. I find that it performs excellently in terms of hot throw. Of course, it's going to be strong anyway because I have two candles in here, but for the first burn, I'm not really looking at the hot throw. It's just kind of a thing that I just wanted to tell you. I think in the second burn, I will be looking for hot throw and then I'll split them up into individual rooms to kind of see how they perform individually. So yeah, that was it. I will come back once we have a full melt pool. Hey everyone, so it's 1.08 and um, yeah, I thought I'd just give you a quick update because it has been two hours. So it's not, it's been half an hour since our last check-in and basically we're still not at full melt pool. I will give you a sideways view. As you can see, the V10 is definitely, the flame length is a lot higher than our V8. No mushrooming at the moment. But yeah, that flame length is pretty big. Although I don't like the look of this. Well, I mean, maybe it's just me, but it seems a bit like off. Um, but it's definitely a lot smaller than our V10. So I will come back when we have a full melt pool and I will also show you how I fill out my burn sheet. Hey guys, so we are almost at the three hour mark and before I show you kind of what, what's happening, um, I thought I'd give you just a bit of a close up of this form. So um, something I forgot to mention at the beginning, I feel like I'm a bit all over the place with this burn test, but um, hopefully um, anything that I do miss out, I'll just pop on the screen um, so you, it's a bit more clearer. But something I forgot to mention is that I weigh the candles beforehand and then I will weigh afterwards so we can get a grams per hour or the burn rate. So basically we understand how much wax is being consumed per hour. This will give us the indication to be able to find out what our total burn time is. What I really like about this form is it goes into a lot of detail so here we go yep yeah, we've got our grams per hour which i'm going to be able to calculate it um, reminds you like have you trimmed your weight so one thing i wanted to show you on this sheet is that i've made a, an adjustment here so this i think wick test is basically me meant to be like different types of wicks wick testing but i've just called it burn test because basically i think one doing one burn is not enough to figure out if the wick's right for you or not you want you're going to need to do lots of burns or until the whole candle has been burnt down to the bottom to make sure that it's right for your candle because funny things could happen halfway down the jar or 
it might get too hot or all, uh, basically a lot can happen so that's why I've just called it burn test and basically I've got one two three four five six um, I'm not sure if it'll take me six burns but essentially my first burn is when I let it go to full melt pool the first time then the second time it's basically once it I'll like blow out the handle let it all solidify sometimes on the same day but most likely it'll be on the second day and then I'll just keep doing it in increments of like one to two hours or three hours however long it takes for me to achieve a full melt pool um, each time and basically I'll log all the details down so some of the details that we have here um so this is the timing so 11.08 so we're going to do it finish it at 2.08 um the total burn time so I like the way it's all broken down and it reminds you to like put down really important information like whether your wick has been trimmed or not um so some of the key criteria that we need to look at is the flame height too high a flame will basically mean that it's unsafe or um, you really don't want a high flame uh, because people uh, you can't trust people sometimes to make sure that it's all uh, you know away from foreign objects and stuff like that and I know it's not really your problem but you want to make sure that you've done everything from your side to um, avoid any problems um, so flickering yep you don't want a flickering that's usually caused by fragrance oil a smoking flame um, yeah you, black billowing smoke is never a nice thing the vessel temperature we need to make sure that the vessel temperature is okay and sufficient to touch because some people um may like think that it's okay but, like especially lower down the jar that's an, especially an important criteria lower down the jar to make sure that your vessel's not too hot because someone may pick it up realize like too late that it's too hot and drop it um hot throw of course that's what we want a really strong hot throw melt pool depth now all of this like the in terms of the dimensions i just kind of estimate it i like to measure it in millimeters uh, melt pool diameter but i'm not sure what um they mean by hang up but i've always just assumed that it's basically like a curling wick um of course tunneling smoking wick soot on the vessel and any mushrooming which is all the usual stuff that you would check out for anyway so it is almost time it's 206 so two minutes off and let's go and see what's happening here so this is my V10 and my V8. Sorry, I made a mistake before when I was talking about the V7. When I use the Weedo Wick Configurator, it basically recommends using a V10. So I'm not sure why I thought a V7 would work. But as you can see, for my V8, it's not reached full melt pool at all. It's probably going to tunnel. I don't think it will reach a full melt pool um, in any of the other burns. Maybe like once it gets like lower down, you'll have like the wax from... Oops, sorry. Um, maybe you'll have some of the wax from around here melt down a bit because it'll get hotter as it goes down. Um, in terms of the flame, um, yeah, it's quite, I mean, it's pretty stable to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's a lot smaller than this flame here. I would say this flame is about like a cent two centimeters. I would say two or one between one and a half and two centimeters. This flame, um, you can see here, it's quite a bit bigger. Um, I would say that's about three centimeters. And if we come in here, again, this has not also achieved full melt pool, which I'm quite surprised about because I use a V14 in my um, 30 centiliter jars. And I just, I don't know, I've like, <laughs> I'm surprised the V10's not working, to be honest. Um, you can see that there is, um, you know, bits around the end. I'm probably going to let this go for a little bit longer just because I'm curious to see if it will ever achieve full melt pool, but it doesn't look like it's an ideal one. I might need to go up and I'm not sure if there's a V11, but I think maybe the next size up is a V12. And um, I probably will also try out a star below wick because neither of these seem to be like ideal at the moment. But I'll just go ahead and let this one go for a little longer. In terms of the jar, it's not hot at all. I can like very comfortably touch it. What I like to do is closer to the bottom is get my infrared gun and um, basically measure the temperature there. In terms of the melt pool, um, I've just popped in a matchstick and it's pretty deep i would say it's about like a mil like not a millimeter a centimeter a centimeter and a half in that one and if i go ahead and do it here yeah you can see it, it goes in pretty deep so unfortunately i don't think either of these wicks are going to be um particularly great even though 
we've got no mushrooming or anything like that we do have a bit of a tilt in the wicks that's the one thing that i find a bit annoying about the v series it does end up like tilting on me whereas the star blow wicks i don't find has that issue unfortunately this burn test has been a bit of a fail and it's back to the drawing board Ooh, i'm just going ahead and filling out my form and it's just basically what i told you um so i'll just go ahead and fill it out yes um in terms of the melt pool that was a pretty big melt pool i think it was like 1.5 centimeters the melt pool diameter so i kind of just estimate it based on like a rule of like based on like the dimensions that i already know so like the um dimensions of the tin was 68 millimeters and um let's go here we can see there that it's not gone all the way around um i would say it's probably like 58 millimeters um so that's just kind of a guesstimate millimeters hang up yes tunneling yes smoking wick no soot on the vessel no mushroom no and yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and get my infrared gun and figure out this as well as the the total grams and stuff and the total like end weight as well so guys that was a bit of a fail in my wick testing um a fail in the sense that you know neither of the wicks really worked but that just kind of goes with the game of making candles it's not always going to work and can be frustrating and all of those things but once you get it uh, it's so satisfying once you've cracked the perfect wick and you have the amazing hot throw and everything about it so unfortunately i have to keep testing luckily i have Got spare ribbon wicks to keep me going while um, I keep to burn testing these candles and finding the right wick so at least there's not so much pressure to kind of have it done like right away otherwise I'd have to take the whole line off um, and not be able to sell them but I hope you found this useful but I will go ahead like I said um, if I've managed to kind of like get a like customized burn sheet I will go ahead and pop it in the description box below but yeah I hope you found this useful and I will also maybe give an update on how my v10 went um, from this video as well so see you in my next video thank you so much for watching uh give it a big thumbs up and a like if you enjoyed it bye